Hello and welcome to Ninja Bot Painting, Lesson 1, Base Coats. Today we'll be using a Zombicide Berserker Zombie and we will be applying the base coats for a yellow and an orange zombie. Today we'll be utilizing the three colors you see, Taller and Flesh from Citadel, Averland Sunset from Citadel, and Seafoam Green from Vallejo. We'll also be using this orange in a little bit for the orange version of our miniature today. We've primed him with Cryons White to give him a nice base coat so that the paint has something to stick to. And we're going to get started here in just a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is prep our paint. This is going to be a real simple one to do. We're going to use the paint right in the pot. We're going to apply just a little bit of water with our br brush and mix the paint up right in the pot. So what we'll be doing here is we'll be trying to get the consistency of roughly 2% milk. That's always a good kind of starting place for when you're attempting to do this. This will make sure that you're not too thick and not too thin. You may find as you paint that you prefer thicker or thinner and that's always okay. Since yellow is the most prominent color on this miniature, we can use it all over. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. that you'll notice that we've completed our base coat. We're just going to go over it a little bit more to make sure these lighter parts are in. One of the neat things about having a white base and having adequately thin paint is that you'll notice some of these folds actually highlight themselves. So you'll see some of the folds here are actually lighter than their surrounding counterparts just because there's crevices in the fabric. That gives us kind of a little bit of a pre-indicator to tell us where we want to look to highlight when we get to that stage. All right, now it's time for the orange jumpsuit. We're going to get our Vallejo paint here. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to put just a dab of it right onto the palette here. And what you'll notice is I'm using an ice cream lid container for a palette because the whole point of this is to show you you don't need anything fancy. Now the orange paint is a little bit thicker than our yellow paint was. So we're going to add just a touch of water, just a little bit of water in the brush, and we're going to mix it up. Now that looks like a decent consistency there. If anything, it may even be a little too thin, but we'll fix that as we go. That's no problem. All right, now it's time for us to apply our orange base coat to our zombie friend here. Now, what you'll notice is that since orange is the largest and most prominent color we're going to be using on this miniature, it is the one we apply first, and we also apply the most haphazardly. Now, I'm sure that some of you Eagle Eye viewers have noticed that the armor plates that are a feature of these Berserker Zombies, they're going to catch a little bit of paint too, and that's okay, because really, the seafoam green is going to fix that right up for us once we get to that stage. So we're not even going to worry about it right now. We're just going to get our base coat on there. By and large, when it comes to painting, it's worth remembering that there are no mistakes that you can make that you cannot fix. There are very few mistakes that are really difficult to fix, especially this early in the process, and it's paint. We can always add more. We can always go over something. You can always
All right, so we lost a little bit of footage there, but we're doing the same thing. We watered down our flesh color until we got it to the consistency that we wanted to. We are going over all of the fleshy parts as best we can. This time we're being a little bit more careful not to get any on the yellow if we can help it. All right, now on to our orange jumpsuit fella. Now when it comes to doing flesh tones, whatever tone you'd like to be the main tone, you should try to find a paint that's a little bit darker than that. Maybe a shade or two darker than whatever tone it is you're looking for. And what that'll do is that'll give you a little bit of room to highlight it up and a little bit of room to shade it back down. That'll generally make your life a little bit easier. Now you can see some of the highlights of this model are poking out. Some of these little bits of white are catching and showing through our paint, kind of creating a natural highlight. This will show us later on where to put our highlights because we want to work with our minis. We don't want to work against our minis. Sometimes the way that a miniature is sculpted will dictate how you have to do its highlights more than where you might have wanted them to be based on where you imagine the light being. So we'll go ahead and finish this up and then we'll have both of them ready for the next and last set of stages so that we can finish our base coats. All right, next up is Seafoam Green. Now this is an air paint and as such you will never need to apply water to it because it was designed to work in an airbrush. Now, we're going to get a dollop out onto our palette and we're going to switch down to a slightly smaller brush. As you can see, I don't foresee that I'll need very much, so just a small spot will do. Now this brush is actually a Walmart brush. I'm using them exclusively during this tutorial, mostly because I want to show you that this hobby does not have some ridiculous entry fee if you don't need it to. You can make a Walmart brush work and you can get good results with it. So we're going to go onto the model here and we're going to start filling in all of these armor plates. The seafoam grain is a perfect color for this. And later on in your hobby and career, if you decide you want to invest in some nice brushes, you'll appreciate them all the more because you practice with these less nice brushes in the beginning.
All right, now this is German Gray. This is my favorite black currently. It's a nice soft black, which means it isn't a deep abyssal end of the world black. It's more realistic like what you would find on people's clothing or on black shoes or black leather. It really makes a difference and makes it much easier to get a much more believable black on your miniatures. Now my goal here is to get the hair on the yellow prisoner and his shoe, because he only has one, both shoes on the orange prisoner, and then at the end I'll go through and we'll make the lining on their jumpsuits, we'll give that line a quick coat of black too, it's just to kind of help it stand out a little bit. All right, so we're coming to the end now. The big thing left to do now is touch up. Now this is an important step to do at this point because right now you are setting up for all the things we're gonna do next. We are gonna manipulate this paint up and down and we're gonna add shades and highlights to it. Now what that means is we're gonna take this base color and we're gonna make it do things that we want it to do to make it look better. Now, the better your base coat, the easier it is to manipulate. So this is an important final step to just go through and touch them up. Take your time and remember, this is supposed to be a fun hobby that you do for fun. So if you're not enjoying it, take a break, step away, do whatever you gotta do. Come back to it in a few days. It's not gonna hurt anything. You go through and just as best you can, try to touch up all the little details. We'll switch over to the yellow guy now. Okay, grab a little bit of the yellow paint. You can kind of see now he's got a little bit of highlight already on him just from that natural high points in his fabric. We're going to go through and we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to go through and we're going to try and touch up some of these spots here on the, this lining of his jumpsuit. Try to get that line a little bit thinner by coming close to it, but not quite coming over it. You can see sometimes that doesn't exactly go the way you'd want it to. And sometimes you can just kind of wipe it away. And sometimes like there, you wipe it away and it gets worse. But you know what? That's not a problem because like I said earlier, it's paint. We can fix it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back in here in just a second. Once I finish touching up the yellow, we'll touch up the black I just messed up and then we'll be ready to go. 
I want to take a second out and thank you for spending some time with us today. This is NinjaBot Painting. Enjoy the rest of the video. Please remember to like and subscribe as it helps tremendously. I want to thank everybody who's liked and subscribed up to this point.